Good morning, gardening friends. Tea Time Tuesday is back. I'm Lark, and I'm in Wisconsin, Zone 5. Sometimes 4. This last year it was 4, because we were really cold, really cold. Lost quite a few uh, perennials and bushes. Sorry for the lawnmower. My neighbor's cutting and I want to get this video in before it rains and he wants to get his grass cut before it rains. A few annuals on the gate here. I'm trying Lantana because it's drought tolerant and then the Golden Creep and Jenny drought tolerant. And then this one's new for me in the bike. I usually plant it up. This year I just bought a hanging basket of Mandevilla and it's uh, some type of hybrid, smaller. So I am training it instead of going wherever it wants. Little control here. I put twine. Um, yeah. And I tied it to the chicken wire. So I'm winding it around. So some of the vine goes up and meets the sweet autumn clematis which came back and that's a good thing because of our cold I thought I lost it I thought I lost my trumpet vines but I'll show you they're coming back so some perennials and the oh so aggressive spiderwort that I need to really cut back and get out of my garden you're probably thinking where have I been well I'm gonna walk and talk, okay? You hear that? Isn't that sweet? I'm okay, I'm not gonna hurt your babies. That's a wren. Yes, I know, they can be a nuisance, but she sings to me every day, all day. Okay, we'll go back to walking. Oh, see the chippy? Oh, he, he gets in under the deck there. I'm sure they have nests. Lots of rain here in Wisconsin. Lots of rain and lots of cold. Today, it's going to be about high 70s, but then, and it was cold last night, 48. I'm not going to show you the back of the shed and the containers because I just planted them. But where have I been? Well, because of the YouTube changes, I wasn't sure that I'd be able to upload correctly. And I'm not computer savvy, so I kept putting it off. And I'm sorry for you who want to join me on this tour. I'm sorry, but it's not going to be as frequent. Here's Perilla. Oh, Lynn from Wisconsin Gardener. I told you Perilla was aggressive and you just have a little patch of it. But if you remember from last year's video, Perilla made my garden, oh, gave a nice color all season long with the burgundy. So I'm not going to go over what's not blooming unless it's foliage color. So you can see I'm going to have a lot of perilla. This is the third year with uh, all of you who've been following me that I took just a few pieces of uh, Annabelle hydrangea and I want a screen here so I don't see the trailer that's parked behind here from the deck. So it's working out good, and it's going to have a lot of blooms on it. Yes, several things have bloomed already, but you can go back to last year's April and May and see what's blooming. I just can't resist that bluish purple. some type of a, a, a spreading buttercup but it's taller it's not the creeping one and it's in the ranunculus family 
I like that yellow right now. And I'm telling you, I have milkweed this year so much. Just like you know how aggressive violets are? Well, I have milkweed. And pulling it, of course, doesn't help. And I keep pulling it. So the monarchs, they should be heavy. I did see a couple monarchs the other day. Okay, let's walk faster so I can get through the garden. Siberians are winding down. This is, a, oh, my trumpet vine. I wanted to tell you about it, even though it isn't blooming. Okay, it died back. Can you see all? I'm going to leave those uh, dried, dead twiggies on there so the trumpet vine can wind around something, okay? And this is my trumpet vine tree. So what I do to get this trunk on it is I take off suckers. And I did through the years, okay? I don't want them all over and then I let them drop, feed the earth. Okay, so we're going to see when this sucker is going to bloom. We'll see. Spreading Jacob's Ladder, all done blooming. Pretty blue before the spider wart. Oriental poppies, winding down. Lost a lot of my pygmy barberry. Cut it back, of course with gloves on, and even through the gloves I got thorns. It'll come back. That's an old, all my pygmy barberries were somebody who was throwing it out. So I bet they're 15, 20 years old. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Lots of dragonflies. I see a tiger swallowtail. Can I catch them there? Oh, he took off. He was on the alliums. Now forgive me because this is the first video and I'm older this year so we got a little shaking going on. And it's not like Jerry Lee Lewis. A whole lot of shaking going on. <laughs> Another pygmy in there. I like burgundy in the garden. Most of you know that. Can you look at all? Yeah, look at all this spider work. And back, you know, it's hard for me to see the screen when I'm um, filming with the sun out. Can you see the Baptisia? Wild indigo. Oop, 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 and now I shake. Pretty, isn't it? Makes a nice cut flower. I like it. You can sear the end like you do a poppy when you cut it and they cut better for uh, having in a vase. Dragonflies. Smoke bush. Yep, I keep them all bushes. This one does well because it gets a lot of sun. The other one now is getting more and more shade. It's nice having a sun and shade garden because then some things bloom out faster in full sun, which my poppies have, but yet these in part shade are doing well yet and have buds coming on. So trying to have color throughout the garden all the time. 
I just got done spraying my pepper spray for deer. I have a big deer problem this year and uh, they ate all of my Solomon seal, the variegated, but they haven't, oh, I hate saying it, my hostas, they took a couple bites and that's it. But I've been spraying them since they came out of the ground. So I'm thinking that the hot pepper spray is embedded in the leaves. And sometimes they don't even care. They, they bite and they taste it and then they say, nope, don't want that one. Summon substance is that big golden one. Gets a, some sun here. Japanese painted ferns. And yes, I have weeds. This here was all variegated Solomon seal. There's some remnants. And why it doesn't grow back this year, I don't know, but I'm going to be watching it. They hit the flocks too. Can you see the flocks nipped off here? But I'll get a lower bloom and it's up front here, so that's okay. Have many of you uh, put sweet sicily into your garden? It's an herb. Those are going to be black seed pods. Very pretty foliage, fern-like. Smells like uh, licorice. And yes, it's edible. You can make a tea from it or add it to things like your... Sp I add uh, fennel seed. So wherever you add fennel seed, you can add sweet sicily. But I add fennel seed to like my spaghetti sauce and lasagna and that. Pizzas. I always put fennel on my pizzas. I overlook saying that this here was Lady's Mantle. That chartreuse color. I use it for a ground cover. And then we have uh, Simisifuga Hillside Black Be Beauty. So this here uh, tolerates the shade. Does quite well. Love the burgundy foliage. Hillside Black Beauty. Fragrant flower later in the season, late in summer. Now look at this white spider wart. Doesn't that light up the area? The white? When I was younger, I didn't like white in the garden. I said I wanted color. But oh, was I wrong. White is pretty in the garden. So that this is the backside of that same hosta. I have paths through my garden and there are weedy paths and that's okay. This year, that's what it's going to be. Some weedy. I did hire a lady, Roxanne, and I, I am so thankful for her. She helps me in the garden and helped me right since the beginning of spring. She is so good. She's a master gardener, so I don't have to teach her anything. And I love having her. Nice person, too. Costa Regal. Yep, she confirmed that with me. I guessed, and because uh, those were given to me. And yeah, she said they, she thought they were Costa Regal, too. Baneberry had white, insignificant flowers. But oh, I see a milk, I see a monarch on the milkweed. Insignificant flowers, but it turns to a red berry. You can either wait till I film it again or look at last year's uh, video. I'm positive I have it on one of them. And I don't know how to do links, so. Sorry. One day I'll give you uh, Tea Time Tuesday when it's quiet, okay? And I won't talk so much. Ferns this year are awesome. Totally awesome. And I picked fiddleheads again this year. Froze some, ate some right away. Those ostrich and then some cinnamon are in there. You know, they have a dried cinnamon stalk. Cinnamon looking stalk in fall. But, um... 
I pick the ostrich ferns, the fiddleheads. We're supposed to get really cold. Lily of the Valley. All of my Japanese maples died. This one only died back to the ground. And I think it's because Dad gave it to me. And my dad passed away a few years ago, a couple of years ago. And I was so happy that this one came back. And these are blood goods. I had mature ones. I had a weeping one, queen something, lacy looking, all died. I don't see any coming yet. Variegated, uh, blue angel. Now mind you, you can see how this is a deer haven down here in my wild area. We got a creek back there, so the deer love living around here. Okay, this one here you either love or hate. Dave and I love it. Makes an excellent ground cover, very aggressive after a couple years, very aggressive. Persicaria, Lance Corporal. So since I'm not weeding a lot, this is going to be taken over by Persicaria, Lance Corporal. Looks pretty with a, a, a stilby foliage and the astilbia will be getting its red flower soon, and then it it um, reiterates the red in the leaf of the persicaria. Oh, some oh, joke, golden grass of. Mm, I think it started with an A, Japanese grass. And yes, I have Dame's Rocket and Lynn from Wisconsin Gardener. I know that some people call it invasive and shouldn't grow it, but I do, and I try to deadhead some of it, but I want more of it in the wild area. And yes, they say it's invasive, but so are violets. And I don't see anybody going after violets or talking about violets. Lost a lot of the Wigilia. This one's wine and roses, but some of it came back. That's a good thing. These are a later allium. I think they're called Globe Master. This area here had all grass in it, and I dug a most of it up. That's why you see bare ground and I will be laying grass clippings on there. I did spread some uh, annual seed just because like oh heck and I think those are orange cosmos coming up. And I don't like seeing that bare ground but we'll take care of it. Quite a few weeds. That is my project of deadheading or no cutting back the Crane's bill, the pink wild. Some of you familiar with it? Whoops, I'm sorry. This is a hawkweed. Yeah, not Indian paintbrush, but hawkweed. And a lot of it probably got dug out when I dug in this area, but it'll be back with vengeance. Lots of grass in this area, but we got rid of a lot of it. White Siberian ice iris. I'm having fun watercolor painting, and I'm okay. Not bad, but certainly not good, but I'm having fun. And we get together at um, 
uh, senior living where my mom is called Three Pillars. And I, I think I mentioned to you that when we sell, we have our name in there to uh, retire there, sell our home. Still think it's a, a, maybe a year or two away. But anyways, they have this sketch class it started with and it really motivated me to start watercolor painting. I've been procrastinating. More Baptisia. And a sand cherry. Lost some of it, but not all, and that's a good thing. The rose bush back there is a shrub rose, and I don't have any regular roses. Well, William Baffin, but I didn't film that today. That's on the uh, arch coming in. This is a shrub rose. Teresa Boudet, I think it, it is. Oh, there's my monarch. Where are you? Oh, pretty. It's looking for milkweed, huh? can't see if I'm getting them in here. I am. There he is. Lucky it's overcast right now. I can see him. Welcome. You have plenty of milkweed this year. Oh, that white flower that I um, zoomed in on back here is an herb. Valerian. Used for relaxation and sleep. They use the root and uh, it's very stinky and very strong, very strong herb. Chives winding down, that I make sure I cut back very soon. Anything in the Allium family, except the hybrids like Globemaster don't reseed real good. This is a phlox somebody sold me, uh, Carolina phlox. And it stays short like that and blooms now. A spreader, a runner. Another area we worked on here, and I have to get back here with grasses, is uh, under this maple tree, dry. So I divided some daylilies around here and weeded out a lot of grass and still have work to do on that. Yes, that's lamb's quarters, and I eat it. So that's why it's in the front of the garden here, so I don't have to go far. Boy, I got lawnmowers and helicopters. My lupine, I don't have as many as I have had. So we will again throw seed around. The pink is a lupine. And this allium is, if it was in full sun, it'd be bigger. This is Christophii, kind of airy looking but a big globe. It'll be a big round globe. Now this one reseeds a lot. Hasta area here. A few years ago I planted these golden ones. Kind of put them in a snake pattern underneath the uh, uh, pines which we have limbed up. This gets a lot of shade over here. And some of my hydrangeas that are now, I think those are two years old. And that's to hide the wood pile 
from Dave's office right there so we don't look out and see a wood pile. This was all celandine poppy in this area so it w and uh, spreading Jacob, so all blue and yellow. I cut it back instead of cutting it all the way down to the ground in hopes that it might rebloom. Look at, can you see all that milkweed? Can it, is it backlighting it like I'm looking at it? Lot of milkweed. And I pulled it once, all of it. And it came back uh, threefold, I think. No kidding. So it's the year of milkweed. A common single stem peony. My climbing hydrangea die, 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 die back, but not totally. So can you see the growth of the sweet autumn clematis is using it for a trellis, so that's okay. Sweet autumn is going to be happy this year because usually it doesn't get that much light because the sweet, uh, the climbing hydrangea is thick. Now this is my trumpet vine, if you remember, on the arch. Okay? And it's just starting to leaf out. But something is better than nothing. And there's a lot of baby trumpet vines in this wild area. You see how that golden grass that I showed you before, this is the back of the garden, is lighting up the path in the part shade. Exactly why I like lime green in the garden. The deer love munching back here. But I pepper spray this too. Okay, we're not going to walk on the wild side today. So let's just walk. Now for a long time, I leave the seed heads on the Siberian iris because they turn black. And I like how they add darkness in with the perennials, the seed heads themselves. They're pretty. Oh, you're coming. This is a shrub rose that came from my parents' house, but it looked like it died. And it's fragrant, real fragrant, as most shrub roses are. So maybe I didn't lose it. Thank you, Dad. Are you looking over it? forgot to mention on the Baptisia, I like the blue-green foliage. So my friends, until next week, and I'll try to be back weekly for a while, or close to it, I'm going to say bye-bye, and thank you for all your concern if I'm okay, and I am okay. I'm doing good. I found a new passion, and I still have gardening as my passion, but now painting. Painting and gardening, they go hand in hand. And we'll end with the lady's mantle, okay? Take care, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for visiting my channel and liking my gardens. No, I don't get paid for this or anything, so all the hits or the thumbs up doesn't matter. I just like having you.